We've mentioned IP addresses quite a bit already, and I've said several times that in order to be on the same network, you have to be on one contiguous set of IP addresses. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. We're not going to get real deep here because we will have a whole section later on about IP addressing. First of all, we're still using the version 4 IP uh, address system today and we've used it ever since the internet began and we're still going to be using it for some years to come. IP version 6 is taking over slowly. An IP version 4 address is expressed in four parts and we call these octets. Oct meaning eight because there are eight bits in each octet. So this is the first octet, second octet, third octet, fourth octet. Each octet can be any number from 0 to 255. So for example, 100.0.0.1 would be a valid IP address. Next we have something called the subnet mask. The subnet mask tells us which part of the address is the network ID and which part is the host ID. So in this case, everywhere where there's a 255 in the subnet mask, that means that this IP address, this part of the IP address is part of the network ID. Everywhere where there's a zero, then that part of the IP address is part of the host. It's the host ID. So in this case, we have a network ID of 100.0.0 and a host ID of 1. Now be very careful here about terminology. Don't say the network address is 100.0.0. That's not true. In order to call it an address, you have to have four parts. So it's the ID, network ID and host ID. As long as all the devices on the network have the same network ID, then they're on the same network. So in the above example, 100.0.0.0 to 100.0.0.255 are all on the same network, as long as I've specified the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Reserved addresses. There are private addresses and public addresses. The IP address space has been uh, given certain sections that are private spaces that cannot be used or routed on the internet. And they consist of these 10. anything, 172.16-31. anything, and 192.168. anything. In other words, 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255.255, 172.16 to 255 or 192.168.00 to 192.168.255.255. So all of these are private addresses. In other words, I can use these for my home or for my business. As long as I have a public address and I'm using NAT or Network Address Translation to translate from my private address to my single public address before I send anything out to the internet. Additionally, there's another reserved address, 127.0.0.1, which is, is reserved, you can't use it on the internet, and it means myself. In other words, it's a way of referring to this computer that I'm on right now. Technically, by the way, 127 anything is also uh, reserved, and also it can be used as this, what we call the loopback address. This is often called a loopback address. So it just refers to itself. These addresses cannot be used for internet traffic. There are others that are a little more advanced and more sophisticated, but I'm just going to talk about these uh, right now. As far as IP version 6, it was developed because we've simply run out of IP version 4 addresses. There are only 4.3 billion or something like that uh, available or possible. And, um, and then we have the reserved ones we've taken out. There just simply aren't enough for the for the many uh, billions of devices that are out there. So we've developed the IP version 6 address, which looks like this, and it's a big long thing. Each set of four characters, uh, separated by the colons here, is called a hextet. And each number, each individual number here, can range from 0 to 9 or A to F. So there are 16 possible characters here that each one of these uh, symbols can represent. We're not going to get any deeper into IP version 6, but we will have a whole section later on on IP version 4 and IP version 6.